Coach, on uh, the, the first drive, Alvin Kamara had three touches for 47 yards, I think, and a touchdown, and then he only touched the ball four more times the rest of the game. Was that something South Carolina was doing to take him away, or was that just part of the game plan? Or you know, what was it, it, was, it was a combination, and, you know, and Alvin's been banged up a little bit too, so we have to pick our spots with him. Uh, but it's a combination of them taking some things away, a combination of our reads. Uh, but we understand he's one of our playmakers, and when we get his hands on the football, he has the ability to make plays. Uh, and you'd mentioned, you know, the Neyland focus, tightening things up in the locker room. And, and after the game, uh, Dobbs had said that he felt like it wasn't anything South Carolina was doing, but just the team just let their foot off the pedal. Is that part of why you're, you know, wanting to tighten things up in the locker room and, and make a, a more of an effort going forward with the focus? Well, I just think, uh, you know, you have to be focused for 60 minutes, and it takes a mature football team to be able to do that. And, you know, it's like I tell our team all the time, how, how would you let or why would you let maybe one play where you're not focused create momentum for the opposite team? You know, one lack of focus on a play can generate a big play for them, uh, whether it's offense, defense, or special teams. And a lot of times younger players have a hard time of snap and clearing, and sometimes they get mesmerized by the situation. They stare, and their reaction time is a little bit different. I just... I want to tighten our overall focus, our mentality uh, with everything. And uh, like I said, it's a lot different when you play at home, uh, just with the uh, amount of people that are around you, um, you know, people talking to you, all those different things. So I just want to go back in terms of, you know, some of the things you have to credit South Carolina, they did some good things on, but we didn't execute. Uh, like we normally have in the last couple of weeks, but that's football. The game's played by human beings. It's not played by computers. And, you know, you're going to make mistakes. Uh, but again, if you look at the course of a long football season, nobody plays a perfect game. Uh, you know, but when you get in games like that, you have to rely on your habits. You have to rely on, rely on your training. And I thought down the stretch, uh, our team relied on their habits and their training. And, you know, that play Malik Foreman made was remarkable. Uh, when you really watch it on video, the pin and the punch, uh, you know, and that's something that we've worked so hard on in our maximum one periods. And I credit him because he did a tremendous job at that. That uh, was truly a great play. Heather. But going back and watching it on replay, it seemed like players were slipping all mm -hmm. over the field. Do you, one, think that that had a negative effect on your pass rush and the ability to get to the opposing quarterback? And two, do you think, are the conditions in Neyland Stadium, the field conditions, right. becoming concerning to you? Well, it is difficult when you're slipping. And I think sometimes it creates hesitation amongst your players. Uh, but I also think it's been an unusual season in terms of grass. I'm not a, uh, a grass expert or a field expert. Uh, so I think, um, you know, the unusual season with the ryegrass and all that that goes into it. I can tell you this, uh, we're well aware of it. Uh, we're taking every uh, precaution. We're taking every uh, everything we can we're doing and we had a meeting today on it and we'll continue to work to have the best playing surface in the country um, but we were slipping but you know there's been a lot of places around the country that's been like that but we're well aware of it and you know we are working to get it corrected as much uh, and the best that we can at this particular time Obviously, the injury status update question, you knew it was coming from me. Uh, <laughs> I was just testing you this Of course. <laughs> yeah, just keeping me on my toes. <laughs> uh, so I guess uh, Kendrick, Robertson, Will, uh, Wiseman, Preston Williams, Marquez North, Stephen Griffin, where are those guys? We anticipate all the individuals that you just mentioned to be out of practice today. We anticipate all of them to be practicing come Tuesday. Uh, they're making progress. We'll see. 
you know, with Brett Kendrick, he's worked very, very hard. Jay Sean has, they all have. Marquez North, um, you know, it's just a muscular thing. And, you know, he practices limited throughout the course of the week, and then we see how he's at game time. Uh, I know he wants to be out there. They all do, and I give all our players credit. Uh, they really worked hard on that. But as of right now, Dustin All should be available for Tuesday's practice. And then I'll know a little bit more on Wednesday, uh, you know, after Tuesday's our, our real hard practice to see kind of where they're at. But the plan right now with the injury report is all will be available for for practice. Right. Butch, obviously you guys made the huge play with Malik forcing the turnover, yeah. but you haven't won the turnover battle in a football game, I think, since Western Carolina. How significant is that for you guys to win that element moving down the stretch of the season with what's left? Very significant. The biggest determining factor is turn in wins and losses is turnover margin. And we need to start taking the ball away much more on defense and you know we call it ball disruptions and again it's not so much just creating turnovers it's tip footballs we still haven't had I believe we had one which is good to see but we need more tip footballs uh, tip footballs usually lead to interceptions that's a byproduct of that being able to impact the quarterback I think we're doing a much better job of impacting the quarterback but in terms of creating turnovers creating fumbles we need to continue to do that and sometimes they they come in circles it comes full circle and I'm hoping that you know you go in now you have some validity behind the pin and punch and everything with Malik Foreman um, and that's why you pursue to the, pursue to the football uh, you know what can I say about Jalen Rees Maben I thought his play on our punt was one of the most in, best individual plays we've had all year. Uh, he beat his man at the line of scrimmage. He was probably ahead of 10 yards ahead of everyone down the field, forced to uh, uh, put the ball on the ground. And that was a big play because then we gained the 10 yards with the penalty as well. And then offensively, you know, taking care of the football. And, you know, the one. Uh, you know, gave them seven points. And as you guys know, you're at practice. You know, we emphasize that. That's a big part of our DNA and what we stand for. But we do need to get up on the turnover margin. Yes, absolutely. Patrick and Steve, and then one more. Uh, I got a, got a couple. Did you say anything to Brian Randolph after his targeting? I know you got a few targeting questions last right. week about that one but with, with Mosley. But did you say anything to Brian after that? No, not really. I mean, he's a veteran player. He understands and felt awful about it, felt terrible. And he knew as soon as it happened, he knew what, what was coming next. Uh, so you don't need to. We'll make it a point of contention. It'll be a point of emphasis today in the team meeting, uh, again, which we do every week. But, you know, he felt bad about it and just trying to be physical and get to the football. And, you know, it, Sometimes it does create hesitancy, but I didn't need to say anything. He understood. I'll address it today with the team. And kind of going off the turnover question, it looked like Cam maybe thought he had one with that fumble late. There's been a couple times this season where there's been that forward progress question where I guess it's not reviewable and right. they blow the whistle quick while guys wrapped up and it gets ripped out. Would you like to see that rule maybe addressed? I know it's happened in a couple games for you guys this year. Well, it's definitely a judgment call. And, you know, a lot of times is where they deem forward progress was was uh, stopped. And, you know, there's so much. There was a couple times where, uh, you know, they the whistle wasn't blown, and rightfully so. And uh, their running back was on top of a defender, and he wasn't down. So the thing you don't want to do is is ever lose your aggressiveness in tackling or swarming to the football. But it is a judgment call, and it's it's very very difficult. Uh, I think it was the right call. Uh, unfortunately, it's a game of inches. Uh, but when you look, the official had blown the whistle. You know, it was bang bang. That the you could see the arms go up, and then the ball come out. So it's uh, it's a judgment call, but it, I know it's a challenging judgment call, but I think they made the right decision. Steve? Just if you could clarify in terms of the locker room, it's just like pregame access to like friends, family, people outside the program pretty much? Yeah, just a lot of things. You know, it's, it's teaching our injured players, uh, you know, about the, you know, the focus that needs to be in that locker room. You know, when we go on the road, we have a travel roster. We have a limited travel roster. So it's the individuals respecting the players who are playing and, and them understanding that 
you know, they have to make sure that the players who are playing are focused. It's more so that not, you know, it's you look at everything. It's not just the visitors or things like that. We, we do a good job of monitoring that. It's just the overall home focus of, you know, you, you pretty much dress everyone for a home game. And so there's a little bit difference in terms of the locker room. And, uh, you know, everywhere I've been, we've kind of uh, really made it a small group and, and we've educated them and we'll continue to educate them, especially our players that, that aren't playing is, hey, you need to respect your teammate. And uh, it's a time for them to get locked in and focused and, and have that great mental effort and mental intensity that it takes. So it's just a combination of a lot of little things. And it's difficult, too, because you have recruiting. You know, you have recruits coming in, in and out, and rightfully so. You, you know, you want them to, to see that. So there's a lot that goes into it. Every, every home team faces that same uh, set of circumstances and challenges were no different. I've talked to 10 head coaches this morning and we joke about it because our concerns are exactly their concerns and you just, you know, you want your players to have the best focus that they can possibly have. That's Tennessee head coach Butch Jones as the Vols prepare for homecoming against North Texas kickoff at 11 a.m. Central from Neyland Stadium this Saturday morning. Coming up, Vanderbilt, they'll try to rebound against the Kentucky Wildcats team for a kickoff at 3 o'clock on Saturday after uh, a disappointing loss in the Swamp. And I say disappointing because the final score, 9-7, to where the Commodores had the Gators on the ropes. We'll hear from Derek Mason next here on Sportsline on News Channel 5+. Plus.